Hi everybody, this is Osprey from MyChartCoach.com and in this video we're going to take a look at the marijuana sector. Okay, so first up we're looking here at the Marijuana Index. Uh, you can find this on uh, MarijuanaIndex.com. This is the North American Index. You can look here at the uh, three-month chart. You can see how it had the pullback from up here on uh, June where it topped out. And then it, and then it pulled back from uh, basically around 270, 280 down here to this 220 level. And now it's starting to try to uh, curl up off the bottom here. So, uh, you know, hitting 228 on the close today, it's right back up to these uh, levels from earlier in July. If it can bust through this, this uh, 229, 230 resistance zone, it could get a move going higher. Now take a look at the United States index. This is the this is taking a look at the publicly traded uh, marijuana companies uh, in the United States. The, the North American index is the combination of the United States and the Canadian uh, stocks uh, combined together. And so as you can see here, there was a big pullback with the U.S. stocks. And then now they're trying to make a bounce off the bottom. You know, if you drew a line across across these tops here, it looks like it's trying to break this trend line here, and so it's trying to break out. And so, what what you want to see for the United States index is a break above 92. A close above 92 would be really bullish. Okay, let's look at the Canadian index. The Canadian index, you know, had a peak here on the 21st as well. They drove it all the way down to to 500, and now it's coming off of 500. If it can get above this this close here at 528, 529, you could see it work its way back up to 550. What we're what we're looking for here is a break of this trend trend and, and, and for the uh, you know for it to start curling up. Okay, so take a look at CGC. This is uh you know there uh, there was a couple of uh, the the big dogs had nice closes today. Canopy Growth is ar arguably the the number one cannabis company in the world uh, today. It did have the bullish close that we had been looking for for the last couple of weeks. It had been riding below this gold line for the last two weeks. Uh, it, two, yeah, two weeks straight here, a little over. Um, it, it's been riding the 100-day simple moving average at 26.58. That's the gold line. It had closed over here a couple, one time here uh, um, early in August, but then it pulled back below. It's just wound super tight here. And now today there was finally a close above resistance. You can see here there was an ascending triangle pattern formed, and the break above horizontal resistance here signals more upside potential. I have this line is green because this is the key support level to hold. It needs to stay above 20 26 support. If it dropped below the middle Bollinger Band at 26, uh, 36, or below that that 100-day simple moving average at 26.58, that would signal it's not ready to go. If they hold, this could be the start of a new uptrend. If you look back here in uh, April, in May, heading into April, once the middle Bollinger Band turned into support, it got a nice run going. And so what we're looking for now is a break above 28 and a run up here to this 50-day simple moving average at 28.81. That's going to be the big key level to break. If it can close above that 50-day simple moving average, similar to back here on May 14th when it was struggling with the green line and it finally closed above. That should be the signal that it's finally ready to head higher. Notice the nice uh, volume spike, bullish crossovers. I mean, yeah, th this is the, the 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 you know top dog here. So if, if Canopy Growth does well, you know, it should help elevate the other stocks in the sector. Okay, so take a look at Constellation Brands. They, they own 10% of Canopy Growth. Okay, they, they are the maker of Corona Beer and, uh, you know, they're, they're a big player now in the cannabis cannabis industry, uh, the cannabis sector, you know they're they're they want to be the the cannabis beverage kings of the world, uh, similar to what they have with their uh, with their uh, alcohol empire. And, and so the bullish development yesterday was the close above the middle Bollinger Band. So that close above two twelve, basically two thirteen there, two twelve ninety seven. That that signals the possible start of a new uptrend. So above two thirteen for STZ is very bullish. Uh, the, if it drops below that. That would signal downside risk, not ready to go. It needs to stay above this 300-day simple moving average. What you're looking for now is a run up here to that 50 and 200-day simple moving averages, a run up to this uh, uh, $220 resistance level. That will be the next key level to break. Okay, take a look at GWPH. This is the other top dog. This is the top pharmaceutical cannabis company in the world. Uh, they're out of the United Kingdom. Uh, they're the CBD kings. They, 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 they're the first company to get FD approval for a CBD drug. Um, 
Um, so they, they had been driven down here. Um, they came down. It's bouncing off of this 200-day uh, simple moving average support zone. Notice yesterday's candle had the long lower wick. Uh, you know, there was some loading here off the lower Bollinger Band. Uh, it, you know, just below is the 300 and 400-day simple moving averages down here between 122 and 123. That should be a major support zone if it was tested. You should see people buying. People are buying right now off of this 200-day super moving average support zone at 131.63. That's the key level of the hold. It needs to stay above that. And EMA's four and eight, the pink and line lines. It, that close above those levels is signaling more upside potential. The, during this drop, there hadn't been a close above EMA's four and eight since back here on this candle, since the last time it was above the middle Bollinger Band and had an uptrend going. So this is a bullish change in trend. Look for a break above EMA 13 at 135.68. And then the big level of the break is going to be this 140 resistance level. That's the 100-day simple moving average in the middle Bollinger Band. It needs to close above both those levels to get a new uptrend going. If you look here on the GWPH 15-minute chart, you can see it came up here and it hit this blue line. That that line is the 50 or the 300-day simple moving average. It broke above temporarily and pulled back. It's going to need to get above that level to head higher. So, so look for a break above 135.43, and that, that'll set up a run to that 400-day simple moving average at 138. It hit that, that zone today, that 138 zone, and pulled back. And so those are going to be the two big levels, basically 135.50, 138, clear 138, and GWPH should get moving. Okay, take a look at Tilray here. This is the... Uh, ticker symbol T-L-R-Y. This is the recent uh, marijuana IPO. And uh, you can see here it had the, the big pullback after the nice run. It ran up to 34 after, you know, being down here at 1950. That was a big run. It came down here. It made a higher low, you know, higher low than here, which is good. That's what you want to see. Um, it it, it uh, uh, came up here and it finally got back above that, that EMA's 4 and 8. Right now, those are the moving averages we're working on. Now the EMA 13 showing up. And so the key is to stay above these three levels. If it can stay above that 2450 level, th th then that should signal that it wants to push higher. If you see it close below 2450, that's going to signal consolidation. It has to stay above that level for it to be a good play. Right now, you're looking for a break above the closing price here on the uh, 6th of August. And and so if it can break above 25, the next key level to break is going to be up here at 2650. So 25, 2650, two levels to break above. You need to stay above 2450 to remain in play. Okay, take a look at Cronus Group. Okay, so this, this ticker symbol has been under immense pressure. It, it, it's been riding EMA4 resistance lower. Uh, it, right now, it, it, it's it's looking extremely bearish. It closed below the 200-day the simple moving average. What you're looking for now is a close above EMA4 at 580. You know, it needs to close above that level. The real the real clue is going to be a close above EMA 8. It did close above EMA 4 last week, but it's failed to stay above and, and, and kept pulling back. Once it gets above EMA 8, that resistance has been, you know, very strong during this pullback. That should be the signal that it wants to head higher. Notice how the top of all these candles are hitting this lime line that keeps pulling back. That's EMA 8. Once there's a close above, that's going to be your signal. Okay, Cronus is ready for a bounce, ready to get an upward move going. Until then, the, the bears are still in control. Control and the next target downward is going to be the 300 day simple moving average at 478. Okay, so 478 is going to be the next support level way down here if it fails to break EMA4. Keep in mind, holding anything overnight long, be it a marijuana stock, be it a cryptocurrency, be it a commodity, whatever it is, if it's on a chart and it's closing below EMA4 on the daily chart, that is a risk to hold overnight if you are long. Okay, take a look at Aurora Cannabis ACBFF. All right, so this is another one to keep an eye on um, you, you know so, so we had uh, you know canopy growth over here looking good back above the middle Bollinger Band well the other top dogs like ACBFF it has been under very you know intense pressure it dropped below the 300 day simple moving average below the blue line there currently at 518 so uh, it, that's the level it needs to get back above right now it's headed for the, the 400 day simple moving average at 436 that's down here and, and for this uh, bottom of this current channel um, you know you've got this uh, descending resistance line and, and and the green lines lined right up here with this 450 support zone so so this is where it should get a technical bounce somewhere between 440 and 450 you should see buyers in the zone if it failed to hold the zone that would be crazy this chart would be super broken you could see a drop much lower as you can see down here 
the the uh, ACB Aurora Cannabis, you know, it it was uh, you know in, in a channel down here below 250, and then once it closed above 250 on this candle, it went parabolic, and, and so the, the this zone right here uh, up here with these this cluster of candles needs to hold. You know, if it failed to hold this this uh, you know 430 you know 450 support zone, th then you could see a drop all the way down to 250. All right, because because the, there's not a whole lot of support in between these two levels. All right, so it's going to be very, very, very important. So I would be looking for a technical bounce off that 450 support zone for Aurora Cannabis, especially with with uh, canopy growth uh, possibly starting a new uptrend. Okay, let's look at Afria, Afria, A P H Q F. All right, so bad news for these guys. They came out and reported their fourth quarter earnings uh, yesterday. Um, uh, Motley uh, Fool was all over it. I like the Motley Fool's uh, marijuana cover. They've been doing a great job, excellent job. This is a good place to go for uh, information on the sector. They do an, a very thorough analysis. It, 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 they, they do a good job. And, and uh, yeah, so, so basically I would come through and I would read this. You know, they're saying that the, um, you know, the report was bad. Um, you know, things didn't follow through. Um, you know, dilution is the big problem. And that's the problem with the whole sector. That's why we have these ugly charts is because of dilution, the big pullbacks. Uh, you know, same thing with ACBF, you know, with the Aurora Cannabis, it's the dilution that, 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 that's really hurting investors more than anything. Okay, and so right now we have a Fria here. Let's take a look at the chart. So, so it's beaten up. Motley Fool says it's an ugly, ugly earnings report. And so, uh, you know, one person's trash can become another person's treasure. Keep in mind, this is the the uh, 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 according to their uh, the amount of cannabis that they've grown. Uh, I believe, uh, yeah, they're the they're the third largest. Uh, um, where does it say right here? Uh, yeah, they're, they're the, I believe they're the third largest uh, cannabis company uh, for uh, total uh, units uh, right here. Sits third in pecking order for their annual production of 255,000 kilograms. And so, uh, yeah, this is a big time player. And, and so, uh, you know, they, 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 this is a fully legal license of uh, federally backed uh, Canadian marijuana company. And, and keep in mind, this is a worldwide company. They have licenses in Argentina. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're, all, they're in Germany, having a Germany, Australia. You know, they are literally all over the world. This is a worldwide thing now. And, and so just because it's a Canadian company doesn't mean they're, they're limited to Canada. And, and keep in mind, they have talked openly about entering, and all, you know, all these companies have as well, entering that United States market. And so th that's going to be the, the the big thing it is who's going to be the, the most in the best position to take advantage of uh, America w once it becomes federally legal in my opinion it's going to be the canopy growth it's going to be Aurora it's going to be the top dogs in Canada because they have the biggest war chest that they're the most established they're going to be the, the mo most likely to be the ones to take advantage uh, of the upcoming uh, you know uh, increase in uh, in just the whole industry once uh, the United States becomes federally legal so so th this is just the beginning for these companies so just keep that in mind um, if you look here um, it's hitting major support right now this is where it should bounce it should get a technical bounce if it fails to get a technical bounce off this level the chart is severely broken it dropped below that 300 day simple moving average the blue line at 828 and now it's hitting the 400 day simple moving average at 737 this is where it needs to bounce notice how this is lined up with support from back here in april and in may you know this is where it should get a technical bounce what you want to see is a close above ema4 at 775 i mean it looks like there was bullish hair me that closed Closed on the uh, formed on the six. You've got a doji that formed today with a, a red candle that forms a, a bullish harami cross. You know it's forming reversal candles here at the bottom. It just has to break above 775. Once it gets above EMA four, then it could get moving similar similar to this candle on May seventh. Notice how it consolidated here. Once it got above resistance, then it took off, and so that's what you're that, that's what you're looking for here. Not not saying that it will necessarily happen with the with the earnings report, but but just saying that this is where it it, it would you know the, technically on the charts this is where it should have a bounce unless it's going to be severely broken. Okay, take a look at CV. 
CVSI, all right? So this is CV Sciences. This is in the, all, every stock in this video is a marijuana sector stock. This thing has been a beast. Um, yeah, just a very, very strong uptrend. If you notice down here in April, it was trading in the 40 cent range, you know, for, and, and, and just nothing but upward movement. You know, it's had some dips, but it, but it held support. It's been above the 50-day simple moving average, the green line the whole time at 216. It's been holding, you know, once it got back above that middle Bollinger Band at 258. And for the last several weeks, it's been riding above the, the pink and lime lines, above the EMAs 4 and 8. As long as they hold the signals to keep riding, once it drops below EMA 8 at 320, then it could possibly, you know, then it could consolidate and come down and test that middle Bollinger Band, similar to over here where you had the pullback. But, but right now, it's pushing really hard. It is getting a little far. It's up multiple days in a row. Um, you know, you've got a couple gaps here, but 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 the bottom line is, if EMA four at at, at at 344 keeps holding, it signals more upside potential. This is just a. I just want to show you this chart because this is. Uh, you know, there are marijuana sector stocks that are performing well, and CVSI has one of the best looking charts. Okay, if you look at KSHB here, this is Kush Bottles. Uh, they, they make the, the the containers and the packaging that that the marijuana goes into. So so you know. Know, they don't have to worry about uh, any problems with their crop or, or the, the declining price of marijuana. That has no effect on them because uh, the, the more marijuana that's consumed, the more bottles these guys need to put out because they're you know they're they're in the picks and shovels business. Okay, so if you don't want to have exposure to the the cannabis plant and you just want a pick and shovel type play, that's Kush Bottles. They're providing the containers that the marijuana goes into. This is a legitimate company. This is a United States marijuana company. They came down here. It bounced off of the the 300-day uh, simple moving average at 382. That is the key level to hold. Notice there were multiple red candles in a row. This was down six days in a row. You've got a hammer type candle right here. Even though there was a little wick, that's you know it would be better if there was a volume spike yesterday, and that would signal that people were loading. So the the one red flag here is we're not seeing the volume. You know, this isn't, uh, you know, the vo there, there wasn't volume behind this move today. It would have been better if there was a spike like this, and it was telling you, even though this looks like it was dilution, um, you know, it, it, it would it would be better if people were loading heavy. I mean, there was this big load back here at, at, in this $5 range. You know, it looks like some people were, were loading here, and they've been underwater. Um, it, you know, it should be able to work its way back up to that level. Uh, the, back above 451 in the middle Bollinger Band would be bullish. And then what you really want to see is a break above this 200-day uh, simple moving average at 472. You want to see that level turn back into support. So now we've got, it looks like a bullish one white soldier reversal pattern form today, a close above EMAs 4, 8, and 13 after they've been big resistance during the drop. This is the first close above EMA 13 since way back here when, when this was above the middle Bollinger Band. So all of these candles are below the orange line until today, and that's our clue that this could follow through and get, get, get a more sustained move going. The only red flag is the volume. It's going to need some volume to push through resistance. Okay, look at ATTBF here uh, the, this this company ha has been uh, doing really well um, you know that they're in the the testing business uh, you know that they, they uh, uh, yeah so so basically they they've got the uh, the, the big uh, move above the middle Bollinger Band back on the, what was this, the 31st, and that really put this stock in play. That got everything in motion, and, and then it made, it followed through with the big move the next next day, which was the following Monday. It ran, ran you know, all the way up to this gold line, which is the 100-day simple moving average. That following day, it hit all the way up at the 20 cent level, that, that three... 300 day simple moving average level and it pulled back it formed this bearish dark cloud cover pattern but but it held support you know the, the big thing is it came down and it held the green line we were looking for this level to hold there were no unfilled gaps below and so the the, the reload level and that this was put out in the chat was, was off of this 50 day simple moving average of support held no, notice that the wicks hit that level whoever loaded off at 12 has been rewarded so congrats you know whoever's been uh, you know reading the marijuana sector in the in the chat and uh, the marijuana chat you know, I post these plays in there. And uh, yeah, now we've got a break above resistance. The closing price on the 6th was the key level to break. The close above today does signal more upside potential. It, it, as long as it stays above this 100-day simple moving average at 15, it should keep going. It's also above EMA4 at 15. What we're looking for now is a retrace back up to 1820 resistance zone. So above 15 signals more upside potential. Okay, take a look at OGRMF. There was big talk about this company being a takeover target. And, uh, you know, that's 
that's what sparked this huge rally over here. It had the big run up, and then it pulled back with the whole sector. When when uh, you know the sector pulled back, uh, you can see here. This is the 21st. It looks like or that or around that date where everything kind of peaked and then it dropped, and then now it's worked its way back. Look how much more bullish OGRMF is than than uh, a lot of the charts that we've been looking at. This is above you know all the moving averages on the chart. It's actually above every single moving average over here. I mean, this is as bullish as it gets, okay? And so now, it, it, as long as it stays above the green line, which is the 50-day simple moving average at 391, and above the EMA4 at 395, th th this has a super strong uptrend, and it should keep pushing higher. This is a takeover candidate. You know, they could announce any day that, they, that somebody's trying to buy them out. That's what the Motley Fool put out. They put out a whole article about that. I thought that was an interesting angle. Um, we were already on the stock before that. Um, and, and uh, yeah, so, so if it drops below 391, that would be a sell signal. It needs to stay above that level. You know, that's the stop loss level right now. It's only good for a long play if it stays above. If it drops below, it can still keep the uptrend going, but it might drop down here to 360 and test that middle Bollinger Band, which it would be better just to reload off of support than to hold for the drop. To the upside, what you want to see is a break above this four resistance zone. If it can break above four, this should be able to work its way back up to 450. Okay, take a look at IMLFF. All right, so this is another one to keep an eye on. Okay, so this is uh, its stock is just, it looks like it's getting ready to go. All right, the chart is wound up tight here. Um, you've got the the 50 day simple moving average, the green line here is being tested. It closed just at that level yesterday, and then today it pulled back below. Okay, so, so now what we're looking for is the second close above the 50 day simple moving average at 645. Once it closes above that level, that should be the signal that it's ready to take off higher. Um, you, you can see here it's got a interesting uh, pattern um, okay so you've got this uh, sideways channel action and then um, at the same time it looks like you have a uh, ascending triangle type of thing going on here with the uh, higher higher lows you know and so basically what what you want to see here is a break above this uh, you know 64 65 65 level you know get above that 50 day simple moving average and then get above this uh, high close horizontal zone here okay at 675 that'll be the next level to break and then I didn't see that there but there's a gap right here between uh, high of day or low of day on that candle and high of day on this candle. And so the bottom of the gap is always a big uh, resistance level to break. And so you'd be looking for a run up here to this uh, 71 level, 71, 72 level, if it can break above 675. So yeah, so this is wound up tight. It has some upside potential. It looks like it's setting up. It just needs some volume and a push through resistance. Okay, take a look at CNNRF. Okay, this is Canna Royal. Okay, this guy, th th this this company's interesting. Okay, look at the volume, super freaking low. Nobody's really heard. I, I hadn't really heard of this thing too much um, until I read this article here on Motley Fool. Once again, these guys do a good job. You know, they, they, they compare uh, CNNRF with with Afria, and what's interesting is they they said they liked Afria better, and um, and then Afria came out with the bad earnings, which which that that's you know that happens. It, but they did say that they, they, they uh, you know, wasn't necessarily, uh, um, you know, neither one was a, a, a necessarily a home run, but they would take a free. They both think they're both good uh, stocks for the future. Um, um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The, uh, I, I think that the big thing to take away here with, with CNNRF is, is they, they do the financing. And I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, 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 um, business model. And so they're mainly uh, focused on the uh, uh, companies in, in the United States. As you can see here, they're, they're in California, Arizona, Florida, Nevada, Washington. They're also in Canada and Puerto Rico. And what they do is they provide financing for cannabis companies that are currently having a very hard time getting financing. And in, in, in return, um, I'm not sure all the financing, this is what I gathered out of this little article, is they take a, a stake in the company. So they have equity in a lot of different uh, United States and, and uh, foreign companies that are marijuana related a a as a part of their uh, you know loaning capital to these companies so so they've got their hands in a lot of different pots here so keep an eye on this one that they're a marijuana finance company who, who also have uh, ownership of a lot of different businesses um, it, what, what needs to happen here technically is it needs to stay above this middle Bollinger band at 352 if it drop below that level that would just be a sell signal no good if it drops below 352 if it holds 352 350 is going to be the reload 
download zone for everybody that missed this play because that's the bottom of the channel. If it holds, a new uptrend could get going. Okay, if you don't want to load off 350 and you want to wait, wait for the break above the 50-day simple moving average because if it fails to break that level, it's not going to be ready to go. So a break above 378, if you see it trading to 370, 380, and it closes above that level, that should be the signal it's ready to head higher and it might run back up here into this 430, 430, 440 range where it double top back in June. Okay, so below 350 signals downside risk, above 380 signals upside potential. Right now it's kind of in that, that, that it's in the middle, it's in the gray area. It could go either direction. Um, you know, the bottom of the channel is 350, so that would be the load zone, but it's also the stop loss level. If it drops below, it will be a risk to hold long. Okay, let's look at NXTTF here. Um, keep an eye on this one. This is another one setting up. Notice how it closed at uh, zero here, it closed flat on the day. All right, so yesterday's close was at 106, and today it closed at 106. All right, so this chart is wound tight. Not ready to go, but just one you want to have on the radar. This is what we call stocking our prey. As you could see here, if you jumped in, you might have been able to make some trades here between the bottom of the channel and the top of the channel, between this dollar and dollar thirty. The bottom of the channel is around a dollar here, and the top of the channel is around a dollar thirty. And there's been trading in between. It's been getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And if you look here at the last like ten candles, look how tight they are. I mean, look at the, the support and resistance. They, all, all these candle bodies are fitting in this super tight trading range. Look at the Bollinger Bands. The upper Bollinger Bands at 113 and the lower Bollinger Bands at 101. Extremely tight. A break below 101 and the lower Bollinger Bands is going to signal downside risk. And you can see a drop down to this 300-day simple moving average at 91. Okay, that would test the support from back in May. If it breaks above the the 50 day simple moving average at 111 and that upper bollinger band at 113 that should be the signal that it's ready to finally head higher and then what what it has to do next would be you know bust through the channel which is the july high close and then you have the june high close here those two levels and they are lined up with the 100 day simple moving average and the 200 day simple moving averages basically 120 and 130 a break above 130 would be extremely bullish i would have nxttf on your radar and just wait for that break above resistance before you take action. Okay, thanks for viewing this video. If you'd like to learn more about charts and technical analysis and the marijuana sector and uh, yeah, how to, how to trade these stocks, uh, please come check out the chat. Thanks.